lot. <laughs> Jade, you left. You left the. the your Charlie filter is on. You gotta switch that. Oh. Where you can. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Much better. Yes. Okay. Welcome back <laughs> to the Sword of Truth podcast, the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a medicine bottle of craft brew on the side. Now, I am assuming that's a liquid medicine bottle. Yeah. Those are the most on, annoying on this ones show it is. to fucking, like, to pour into the little tiny bottles. It's the worst. Hate it. Yeah? Yeah. Is that difficult? This is part of my job, and it's the worst. <laughs> the liquids, ugh, I inevitably get my hands covered in it. and Maybe not covered. That's excessive. But I make a mess a lot of times. It's the worst. Anyways, I'm Jade. <laughs> And I'm Nate, and today we're going to be giving some emergency care to Chapter 12 of Temple of the Winds. Ooh. That's right. Emergency care like paper towel, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally what, <laughs> whatever's close. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and also alcohol, like alcohol wipes to get rid of the sticky. Oh, yeah. If you miss anything, you find it later for sure. Yeah, you want to chemical clean that. Yeah. Make sure it's... Yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> Don't bump me. I'm doing the liquids. <laughs> I just, I never, I don't know. When you said that sentence, I just, it never occurred to me that that would be a thing somebody said, I guess. Yeah. It Sounds is. weird, but, huh. You're bent over the counter. Your ass is sticking out in a very small That's little right. don't area. Don't make me spill. Yeah. No, man. Holy shit. High <laughs> stakes. Do yeah. Not. Yeah. Well, uh, in today's chapter, speaking of don't bump me. Yeah. 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 See? There it's coming through because I'm super good at transitions. Um, Segways. Kaylin and Nadine are probably saying that. In the dark, while they make their way back up the drainage tunnel to civilization and or people. <laughs> Kaylin's Long probably- game Kara. They're going to Kara. Yeah. Kaylin's probably saying that because I'm sure Nadine is all the way up her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Probably up her ass. Kaylin's already irritated because Nadine lost the torch. Mm -hmm. The one reason. Anyways, I think we're past that now. Yeah. We're yeah. just, we're living with it. Here we go. Either way, they have to get back. So it's not like they have a choice. No. You're, you're, well, Nadine wanted to just wait until people apparently <laughs> came and found them. Which, who, God knows how long that would be. I mean, okay, we'll get into it, but that might have actually happened. They would have had to wait a long time. I mean, I'm sure possible. it would have, but yeah. So Nadine and Kaylin are cold and wet. They're almost blind from the darkness, but at least now they don't need to worry about Marlin. He's not going to be popping up right? like a scary motherfucker anymore. <laughs> He's not hiding around the corner in the darkness. Literally could be anywhere. Yeah. I mean, we just imagine that Jagang was choking him out underneath the water, but apparently it's, it, it is explained, I can speak words, that most likely Marlin was just waiting in the water with his face above yeah. the surface so he could breathe and wait as long as he wanted. And yes, that makes sense. And but that would be a terrifying came. thing. Yeah. To, <laughs> they don't have a torch now, but to look down and like imagine seeing a dude's face in the water. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh. It's almost better in the dark, yeah. you know? Well, we just watched Lord of the Rings where they have all the, all the dead bodies like yeah. in the water. Yeah. And it's and like creepy. fucking scary, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, it's not a great time. <laughs> well, all Kaylin wants to do right now is just like lay down, but you can't. They manage to find soldiers, right, who lead them with torches back through the tunnels towards the pit. Yeah, because, I mean, they had split off from some guys. Like, every intersection, they left a couple guys each. You know, they all went left while she went right, right. at each intersection. So, eventually, yeah, when they came back and met at an intersection somewhere, I'm sure some guys were like, there was no one down there. I feel like the last two soldiers that they split with, right, they went upstream while Kalen and Nadine went downstream. Oh, yeah. So, I feel like those two guys... Would have been the guys to go, okay, well, we didn't find anything, and the last place we knew that the mother confessor was going was down that tunnel. Down that dark-ass tunnel so, down like, there. we're going down there, right? Yeah. We, we have to. Yeah. You can't go back and be like, oh, yeah, I looked everywhere, and then they go in and then find her potentially dead body. 
Yeah, I also feel like... Then you're in trouble. Yeah, especially if you're one of those soldiers and you left the mother confessor with a decidedly not experienced or any help weak woman with a torch. <laughs> and you two soldiers went the other way. I mean, she and told you And an assassin. To. Yeah, she told you to, okay. But still, after you get a little ways down the tunnel and you don't find anything, I'm sure one of those guys turned to the other yeah. one and was like, I feel like we should go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Like he's obviously not down here, right? Right. We went the wrong way. Like, fuck. And, and she, she's definitely probably with the assassin, right? We <laughs> should, we should be over there. <laughs> like, who were the last two? One guy should have gone alone. One guy should have gone with for her. sure. Like, yeah, we didn't think about that. Sorry. Yeah. Well, then there wouldn't have been one of us to run if a guy was there. That's, so that's also true. Yeah, that's also true. Marlon would have killed both of them. Though, let's be real. <laughs> Well, outside the hall to the pit, there are hundreds of soldiers with weapons. They're ready now. <laughs> new guys. These Kinda, are new guys. Yes, fresh recruits here. Yeah. The dead and wounded had been cleared away, but the blood stains were still in place. And but... inside, the pit is silent. Yeah, they didn't call the cleaning crew down here and be like, <laughs> like scrub the floors. They were like, there's still some shit going on, so we'll deal with that later. <laughs> Well, like they're they're kind of dealing with it now, you know. They're I, in the middle of it. Yeah, I mean, like the blood stains. Oh, that, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll get a guy down here, but yeah, later. But <laughs> there's yeah, some other stuff going on right now. I would. Uh, yeah, the silence is worrying though, because mm-hmm. we know she was screaming, and now she is not. That's right. Kaylin asked Captain Harris if anyone had gone down there, and totally unashamed, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's not our shit, dude. Yeah. We're steel against steel. Uh, you're going to have to go to the ma'am department for that. Yeah. Magic well- against magic. <laughs> the ma'am. Well, and to be fair, when they had gotten there the first time and none of the soldiers were down there with Marlin, they were like, oh, well, totally to be expected. None of these dudes are going to go down there in the pit yeah. with the craziness. So. Uh, when the enemy was in there. Yeah, so, like, the way this is worded almost seems like it's trying to shame the soldiers for not going down there to, like, help Kara, but it's like, for sure, the fuck they wouldn't, especially to help <laughs> Kara. Yeah, I mean, they already aren't fans of the Mord Sith, but at the same time, like, same team. Yeah, the same guy team. guy's gone, same team. But like, she she deals with magic. They don't, so. That's true. That's true. Not our deal. They're not my fucking job. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, we don't know what's down there. It could be like a fucking lightning bolt reverberating all around the bottom and we would just die. We're not. N- if we nope. opened it, we could kill everybody. Exactly. We're not willing to risk that. Nah, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so because they're the steel against steel and that, I mean, they did their job. They did their job yeah. because that's an established thing. And. Because she doesn't really want to belittle them in light of everything that just happened. Like, a lot of people just died. And they are dealing with that. These are their, like, friends and brothers in arms. You know what I'm saying? She informs him that the assassin has been killed instead of, like, chewing them the fuck out for not going down to see Kara. Yeah. Which I think is the right thing to do. Because it's... Yeah. Like I said, they wouldn't have normally ever gone down there anyway. Like, they would have had to been very brave motherfuckers to be like, I am yeah. going to risk my life to go save the Mord Sith down there. Possibly, probably not. Well, and now they know that all of those guys, all those bodies that are gone, but the blood stains still on the floor, mm. um, you know, that wasn't for nothing. They yeah. got the guy. Yeah. The assassin that was going to kill the Lord Rawl, he's dead. So, yeah. I mean, and we know this about Daharan soldiers, um, is that, like, they're willing to die for it, right? Yeah, for sure. That's a that's a known quantity. I was just like, wait, are they Daharan soldiers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I yeah. Co- I confused myself. Yeah. But yeah, like, that's something we know that they're willing to do. It's been said over and over and over. So, yeah. yes, we feel bad about them dying, but, like, that was also, that was kind of part of the deal. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that is their, like, their whole mm-hmm. creed and whatever, but they will, they are but scared not for of magic. magic. Yeah, they yeah. are scared of magic, right. and so that is an established thing also. So, yeah, they're not fucking with the shit in the pit, and then I don't blame them. So the soldiers all seem relieved, as they would, that the uh, target had been acquired, so to speak. Mm-hmm. 
But Harris is still concerned. He is looking at Kaylin. Kaylin is in rough fucking shape. <laughs> she's just been through, <laughs> it's not a sewer, but like she's just been through a sewer. Essentially, yeah. Fought a wizard demon zombie creature mm-hmm. and survived and then found her way back. And at the end of all of it, like, I mean, come on, you look like shit. Yeah. You know it. I know it. No she need needs, to be ashamed about it. Dude, you stitches. just went through some stuff. Yeah. Her arm is probably yeah, you're infected. Wounded, <laughs> bleeding. Yeah, get out of that water. But so he's like, look, maybe we should just get you some help. Right? Let's start there. She's not interested in that. They have to go help Kara. Now, Harris tells her that Kara has been silent for about an hour. And Kaylin confirms that this is about when Marlon died. Right? That happened at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Which, I mean... Still hope that she's alive, but in my head, I'd be like, oh, shit. So, like, she's dead. So she died at the same time. Yeah. Right. And it does seem to me here, and it it's not the case, I know that, but, like, it does seem that Kaylin never has the thought that maybe she died. No. Just does. that she's quiet. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, like, she stopped screaming. And maybe she's just more of a an optimist than I am. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, she's dead for sure. I would be saying that to myself the whole way down. Yeah, I mean, if she was in that much pain, the only thing that be c- could be, like, ripping through her body and causing that much pain is probably going to fucking kill her, because she's a Mord Sith. Yeah. Like, that's what my brain she would She can take saying. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if that connection is dead, then she pro- her brain has probably been fried, is what I would have assumed. Well, inside the pit, right where she had been when they left, Kara is shaking in convulsions. And choking on her own vomit, too. Mm. That's an extra nice detail. Um, But yeah, so could very well be. It looks like she's having a seizure of some kind. Yeah. Uh, They do their best to clear her airway, which they do. They do manage to let her breathe, which is, like, (laughs) great. But the convulsions haven't stopped. Yeah. And just, like, I don't know, knowing people with... Epilepsy. Epilepsy, thank you. Um, and knowing kind of how that works, like, yes, you can breathe, but th- like if you're having a grand mall, I think it's called, you can really hurt yourself just like flopping all around well, or falling over and breaking stuff like on you. You know what I mean? You can really, really get hurt. Even even if you don't hurt yourself in some way, the convulsions of your whole body, like your whole body going in convulsions like that. It tight, like every muscle is being contracted. Yeah. It causes a massive amount of stress to your body. Yeah. That's painful. You get very sore and tired yeah. afterward. It's, it's a whole fucking thing. And she was vomiting. She could have died just by choking on her, by something as simple as choking on her own fucking vomit. Yeah. Because nobody Absolutely. knew that that's what was going on down there. And that means this has been going on for like an hour. Yeah. I mean, we could assume. I'm assuming the convulsions have been going on for an hour, the vomiting maybe for an hour, but she didn't start choking on it until very, very recently because she would have been dead had she been choking for an hour. Maybe that's more of a recent uh, development. Yeah. But I mean, they just like you start choking, you're dead within a few minutes. So they luckily did not miss out on. On that part. Yeah, they got there just in the nick of time. But Kaylin still feels helpless. Like, (laughs) the fuck do we do? Yeah, Yeah. what do we do? Now, Nadine, Nadine Mm. says she's got to go get her kit. She's not sure what it is, but she is sure that they have to stop it. They have to stop it now. And she takes off to go and get her stuff. Mm -hmm. Nadine to the fucking rescue. Mm -hmm. This is what she was born for. Mm-hmm. This is her moment in the sun. This is my moment. Right? In the she's sun. winning right now, as awful as it is. Yeah. Like, Kara's in trouble, and she's just like, great, I can do a thing. Mm. And guess who's in charge again? Mm-hmm. Little Miss Me. <sighs> I haven't. Well, okay. Read the next note, and then I'll say what okay. I'm going to say. Captain Harris tells Kaylin that the high priest. Of the Rock Moss, a sect of healers had just arrived in Aiden Drill. She says, Don't fucking stand there. Go get him. And he also takes off running. Cool. <laughs> okay, we have two people coming to help, but two people who, I mean, we have Nadine from Westland with her fucking herbs. 
who I like, even if this is a regular ass seizure, I don't trust that. And then we have random ass dude number two from the Rog Moss, wherever the fuck. Don't know that word. That's a new word. Yeah. Not tested, not known at all. Where are our doctors? (laughs) Where is Kaylin's doctor? Yeah, still our people haven't arrived. This is a real big issue. Like, Kaylin has been living there for so long. When she gets hurt, when something happens to her, she, sh- I'm sure, has a doctor. When the people uh, in I her mean, palace get hurt. I mean, it hasn't been hurt. set up the same way. She was gone. They did change a whole bunch of shit while she was gone. And it never really returned back to normal, normal since then. No, but I'm sure either in the palace or in the town, they have s- established fucking healers that have been there. That's for true. Years That's true. That, I'll give you that. Yeah. For you sure. break a bone, you go to fucking Dr. Gary down the road. That's <laughs> where you go. Gary. Yeah. Oh, on, on fucking on Center, Center Street. Street. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Somebody you can trust. Somebody who's been writing your goddamn prescriptions for 20 years. Not these two, <laughs> you don't know, to save Kara from a fucking magic induced seizure. Right. Like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> That's a valid point. That's a very valid point. From the, this and the next chapter, I I do not stop being upset that we do not have a qualified doctor in the house. Well, it is upsetting because now Kaylin is just sitting there alone with Kara, helpless, just holding her, like just giving her a hug. There's nothing she can really like do. She's just there with her friend. Yeah, which I imagine is the way that most people feel awful when somebody around them is having, like, even if you know there's nothing you can do, if you've gone through that a lot, I'm sure it's still helpless knowing, okay, we just got to ride this out. <sighs> well, it's like that uh, motorcycle accident that we stopped at. Oh, yeah. That was fucking, like, my adrenaline was pumping. I didn't know what to do either, you know? Okay, so we found... We found. Uh, we saw. You made it sound very exciting. Also, I know. It's, like an Easter egg hunt. It's, it's because it relates to this, but it's, yeah, it was actually very, very awful. Um, we saw the aftermath of an accident that had happened near a highway on an off ramp in a pretty busy part of the city. I don't remember exactly what happened. I know it wasn't this gentleman's fault. Uh, he was riding his motorcycle and got knocked off it and hit his head really hard on the street. And so a bunch of people came running and like we called 911 and they said, look, you can't let him move. But he's after getting his bell rung like that, he's not going to want you to like hold him down either. So he may fight you just like make sure he doesn't move and we'll get an ambulance out right away. So we had to like hold this guy and make sure he didn't move because he was trying to stand up and like we didn't know if something was broken and it was just it was terrifying (sighs) it was terrifying but luckily one of the people that stopped and ran up shortly after that was a fireman and he was like trained in first response so he knew exactly what to do and he took over immediately but that guy's okay i also like to add that too he made a full recovery Oh, no, he reached out to me a few times and was like, thank you for blah, 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 blah. He did? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. But yeah, that's it's like that. Like, you don't know what to do. All you can sit there is just hold the person and talk to them and be like, hey, it's going to be okay. The people that can help are coming. <laughs> I can promise you that. Yeah, somebody I can't else do anything will be but moral support right now. Shortly. But they are on their way. <laughs> And they've got the lights and the sirens and the whole bit, okay? They're coming. I I, I don't do super well in those say, but like, <laughs> especially when my children are the ones who are bleeding, like, Nate always has to step in because if they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're I'm losing the their guy. lifeblood, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't. They're going to die and I'm going to die. So, Nate, you have to do this. <laughs> Nate, it's the boys. Is there blood involved? Okay. Yep, it's me. It's me. I got it. If it's just a bump, mom could help. If it's more than a bump, mom's probably not going to be your best support system. (laughs) All right. Well, you know what? You know what, Jade? That actually is the perfect time to do the beer break. Oh, this is a good beer break. Yes, it is. I'm excited about this one. Uh, So our patrons will know 
that today I spent my after work hours locating this fucking beer. So I get out of work at about 3.30 and Perrin Brewing Company, in which this is from, closes at 4. Mm. Well, I make it there at 3.55 and the door is locked. Assholes. And there was a guy there who like awkwardly walked away as I walked up. So I should have I should have known better, but I still tried the door just in case. Mm. And uh, no, I couldn't get it there. So I hopped on untapped and I looked at the places that people were checking this in. One place uh, was the place that I found was serving it on draft, which was brick and porter. Without me. Y- yes, I'm sorry, but I found <laughs> it. That's what's important yes, here. It is. And then um the other one was Perrin, which I had no access to. And the other one was just draft, right? They don't sell it in cans. But then somebody, some beautiful person on Untapped, I don't know who it is, um, they checked it in as having bought it from Meyer in Grand Rapids on July 3rd, 2022. And I was just like, is it possible? So I pulled it up on the GPS. And then on my way there, I called Meyer and I was like, Hey, do you guys have this beer? He's like, dude, we have a whole stack of it. I was like, I am on my way. Thank you. And I found it. Now, how, that's a hero's triumph how, right there. How frustrated are you going to be if we go to Meyer tomorrow and we see a stack there at our local Meyer? You know what? I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even care. I'll buy more. We will. We will. But I'm sorry. I, I didn't you, even say yeah, the name even of said it. Yeah, what it is. Uh, this is, I'm so happy now, uh, Michigan Cherry IPA from Perrin Brewing Company. Uh, on the back of the can, it says, let your taste buds bloom into season with our Michigan Cherry IPA made with Traverse City cherries and a well-balanced collage of fresh hops. Now, listeners to the show, longtime listeners, will know that Jade is not a fan of the IPA. Um, I don't even think you probably have to be a long-time listener to know Yeah, that. probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the last three. I'll bet she mentioned it. But the, this beer is a special beer. This is a special beer. It, they stopped producing it like two, three years ago, so we thought it was gone forever. Mm. But this was a beer that before Jade really got into her, I don't like IPAs. This, this is a cherry IPA, and she admits that this is... What? If you had to label this beer something? This is the best IPA. This is the best IPA. Now, this is actually the beer. Like, bef- prior to drinking this beer specifically, I didn't drink beer. Right. So it's like, <laughs> this is also the one that got her into craft beer. Yes. And it's an IPA. Yeah. I was drinking rum and Cokes. And she likes it very much. Until we went to- And that makes me yeah, so happy. Until we went to a certain bar, and I saw there was a, a fruit beer, and so I was like, oh, I'll try that. And that was this one, and it didn't taste like fucking gross-ass beer. It tasted like fruit. And I was like, ah, I like that. And then we went to Paris, and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I like craft brew now. And I got real drunk that day on beer. Yep. For the first time in my life. Because of this beer right here. I remember you remarking on how a beer buzz feels as opposed to other things. Yeah. Like a like a rum, you know, like my rum buzz or yeah. my weed Okay, buzz yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, weed. I wasn't weed. trying to, like, wink, wink something more because it's really not. But, like, yeah, you, we would drink rum. We're big rum yeah. fans here. Yeah. And we would smoke. But then beer, it just, it just makes you... And I never drank it because I was like, that tastes like piss. <laughs> All, everything you're drinking tastes like piss and I don't want none of it. And then this beer came along and, and showed me how wrong I was. The cherry IPA. Yes. So if you can get your hands on it. Definitely do. I strongly suggest. Now, Nate, before we started this episode, Nate made a comment about cookies. Oh, yeah. Real quick. I will throw that in. Uh, this is, I think, what Aaron said to me. Concerning people who say that they don't like craft beer. I would have a hard time believing that somebody could look me in the eye and say that they don't like cookies in general. There's bound to be, they make so many different types of what's labeled a cookie that you're almost guaranteed to find one that you like. Okay. So, so I, and now I, I know what you're saying. Yes. And it's fine to say in general, I don't like cookies. 
You can't say all cookies are bad, though. Yeah, like if okay, if we're talking, there's that one. If we're talking about craft brew in general, absolutely, I agree. And then if we're breaking it down, though, if cookies are my IPAs, cookies, I mean, okay, right? You like cookies, though, right? I do like cookies. Okay, okay, okay. We're fine. <laughs> but if uh, okay, we're talking, your, like, your cookies are cookies IPAs. Cookies are IPAs. Right. I feel like it might be safe to say I don't like cookies if I don't like. 99.9% of cookies are going to hand fair. me, and I'm only going to like the unicorn That's totally fine. cookie. So, you know, I just, it, I if someone was handing me a cookie, I would have to <laughs> preface it by being like, I normally don't like these. Unless this is a very specific cookie, I might gag on your cookie. I just want you to know. <laughs> In front of you. Yeah. Like, it's not you or your cookie. These are just usually terrible. <laughs> <laughs> To me. That's fair. And you know what? Nobody's going to take that from and you. And I'll try it. It's a free cookie. So I'm going to I'm gonna eat it. Or you just can't free say beer, all I'll drink cookies it, are bad. And I'll, I'll just all. tell you if I think it's still terrible. And that's fine. And yeah. that's what we want. And as far as you going out and buying your cookies or your IPAs, only get the fucking unicorn. Mm-hmm. Get the one you want. That's what it's for. Yeah. And then enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. I will. I'm going to drink another one. Good. We definitely are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are going to finish these and get more, and then we will be back right after this. And we are back. back! We've got our, our medicine in hand. Yeah. And now we just have a car to worry about. Oh, Kara. Kara. Not, not a car. A car. No. No. <laughs> Did something happen today? Uh, no, I was just confused. Oh. <laughs> but I'm back on track Cara. now. Kara. Yes. I'm going to keep drinking, and I think that'll help. <laughs> oh, yes, I think it might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, as Kaylin looks around the room, she can see the prophecy, right, that was left on the wall by Marlon. Mm -hmm. Now, she can't read it, and she really wants to know what the fuck it says, but actually, she doesn't really want to know what it says. She wishes that it just disappeared. She starts to wish that Richard couldn't read what it said either. Yeah, because I feel like Marlon insinuated that it wasn't going to be great. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, she's just like, hmm. Well, it is, you know, the prophecy that, like, foresees his death. Yeah. One way or the other. So it's not, like, a good one. And he was super excited about it. So probably not (laughs) anything good. Kaylin starts to cry. Oh. She doesn't want Kara to die. She tells her to hang on and that she cares about her. She feels... Like, she's the same as Kara in this moment. You know, her magic was used to destroy minds, too. They share that together. And she starts to spiral and feels like she's no more than a Mord Sith herself. Now, I I miswrote that in the notes. It's not that she doesn't feel like she's any more than a Mord Sith. I think she's trying to say, or what I was trying to say, is that she feels like her purpose is no more than what a Mord Sith's purpose, like the purpose somebody else gave them was, and that was, you know, to destroy minds. Yeah, well, I, I think that that's... Not necessarily Kara as a person, but like, you know what I mean? That role. Yeah. Her role and a Mord Sith's well, role. Well, like, Mo- Mord Sith are looked at as monsters, mm-hmm. and and like, so is she, and she's feeling herself in that moment in that way. I think she actually starts to feel bad, like, worse about herself because she's like Kara was like told to do what she was but so was she they were both told to do what they did she was literally born into it yeah like there's nothing she could have done to help that no so she compares herself against Nadine too this is where you know that she's already like spiraling and this is like depression thinking yeah she's spinning out yeah (laughs) yeah spinning out for sure Nadine doesn't hurt people she helps people and that's got to be why Richard was attracted to her, right? That's got to be the <laughs> only reason. That's got to be it. It's it couldn't not those be anything else. Big brown eyes and those long legs. No, 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 none of that. No. She helps people. Well, Kaylin wished that Richard was here now. She knows he's going to be mad. We joked about that at length, but she doesn't care. She's like, chew me out if you have to. I just want a hug. I but, just want to be held. I just want it to be okay. And that thought, too, the way that that switched, um, 
is also like the spiral. <laughs> like she, oh yeah, she's thinking about the Nadine and the one thing, and then Richard comes up in her brain. And, like she starts thinking about Richard and just wanting him here, and he's gonna be pissed. But yeah, no, I think the, the comparing herself to Nadine stuff. It, she's not even. She's definitely just spinning out because her and Nadine are two totally different oh, yeah. people, two totally different responsibilities. <laughs> She's not even thinking about it. Yeah, no, not not logically. No. You know, I mean, there was a time I because I was always self uh what do you say deprecating? Yeah. Um I always joke like that a lot, but like when I was a angry teenager, yeah, I'd go down in the basement and holler mean things at myself and that was just kind of normal when you're spiraling. When you're not thinking logically, you're losing your control. You know what I mean? Uh, there's been time in the last six months I've done that. I'm not <laughs> even gonna lie to you. <laughs> it's okay. Like yeah. it's it's not good, but it's a it's a reaction people have. Like in a bad situation, they feel like shit about it, and they just sit there and mull over every single thing that's bad <laughs> and that they don't like. And you know, your brain can be a real terrible place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a dark place that you just should never go. And Kaylin is definitely there right now. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can't fucking help it. No. So. <laughs> and I'm not, and I, I guess that, yeah, we should clarify that. Yeah. I'm not blaming <laughs> Kaylin for feeling this way. It's totally justified. Like, look, she made a mistake to cause this to happen, right? I think she should own that. But ultimately, the thing is done and Marlon is gone. Right? Yeah. So now she just needs to heal from this. N- now, granted, like you said, it's not her fault, but this is also probably not the time to, tr- like, delve into see, like, wait till tonight, <laughs> later tonight when we're not in the middle of this to, like, go super yeah. deep into your depression. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe not right now, but, yeah. you know, yeah. it's still important. Yes. Absolutely. I guess that's all it is. Yeah. You know, it. it is, it is, <laughs> you're, the situation is your fault. It's not your fault that you feel the way you feel. Yeah. But like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm there. Yeah. So Nadine returns and asks if Kara is any better. She isn't. She starts pulling the tools of her trade out of the bag and weighing her options. This is Nadine in all of her glory. A blue colch. Mm, no, that's no good. Pearly Everlasting? Which sounds fine to me. Uh, well, she'd have to smoke that. Not an option right now. So that's out. Damn. That was my vote. I'm mm. like pearly everlasting. I oh, I wish there was a strain called pearly everlasting but because you it would one. be or my favorite. One. I'll just, yeah, I'll just make one. <laughs> Perfect. So she pulls out this horn. Uh, mugwort. No? Fever feud? Maybe? Yeah. That's the stuff we're going with. And-, and She's going through all of the the medical things that these do, kind of, or like the way they're supposed to work and her condition and why certain things won't work. Like she needs just so much of it. You know what I mean? See, to me. They need something small and strong right now. This is like Red Flag City. When she starts doing this, first of all, I'm like. You don't even know what you're digging for yet. (laughs) You're trying to figure out as you go. And the second thing is my limited medical knowledge tells me that, like, (laughs) you should know, like, she's trying to treat the symptom, right? Right. Specifically just the symptom. the convulsions, right. Which, great, but it's very important what's causing that symptom. Underlying cause, right. So, because if you treat that symptom in the wrong way, you could fuck everything way worse. Make it worse, yeah. And I don't even know that much about medical knowledge, and I know that. So, like. If I were Kaylin, I'd be like, do you have any idea what's happening to this woman right now? Well, Kaylin Jade is too busy. <laughs> she is too busy to worry about little details like that. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of cool shit in that bag. <laughs> She's like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> and she wants at it. Kaylin starts fucking around with all the different stuff. There's a whole bunch of horns with stoppers and she's pulling them and smelling one. And then when Nadine turns to look at her, she smacks it out of her hands and then tells her, dude, that was powdered caiman pepper. It, literally pepper <laughs> spray. You do not want to get it on your hands or your face or literally anywhere near you. 
uh, what was your thought process between sniff and stuff anyways? <laughs> it's pepper spray. Most medical stuff smells terrible. I just gotta tell you, most medicines, it's not good. You don't want to be sticking your nose in there. What are you doing? Well, isn't there a rule about that? Like, you're not supposed to smell it directly. You're supposed to, like, waft it over waft to you it. or something because it could be dangerous and, like, burn your nostrils from the inside yeah, out. Yeah, you never much know. Much like cayman pepper would probably do. Yeah, you never know. And when I'm filling medications, I tell you what, there's some of them that you just have to open the bottle and it, you don't even have to waft shit. It smells bad. I cannot imagine. <laughs> this is... As a... <laughs> As a man who has been pepper sprayed, Jade, it's not great. You've been pepper? I don't even know that. Yeah. So I was, wait- I was waiting in line for tickets to go see ICP, and I was shoved into a, a, a lady who was, I'm sure, very, very nice, but I think already on edge, waiting in line with a bunch of people with clown makeup on, and I was pepper sprayed. Hmm. Yeah. It wasn't like a direct hit. And it was over very fast. I think once she realized that it was all an accident, but I got just just enough in there to know that no, nope, do not care for. Tell you what, I watch enough videos online. That's why I don't carry any on a keychain or anywhere because I'm like, yeah, that could save me, but also probably not. It'll probably (laughs) incapacitate myself more (laughs) for the bad person. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the thing that hit me first, I thought it would like sting my eyes, and it, it. does but she didn't like get me in the eye but i got a like a cheek slash mouthful you can't and breathe, so the first right? thing was you can't breathe it's like you know the, the way that verner's tickles your throat and then makes you cough mm-hmm. that you're just your throat's automatic reaction to it it's like that but it fucking hurts <laughs> And it's about a million times worse uh, i'm laughing because i saw this video of this guy who I don't remember who was in the right or wrong in the video, but some guy was trying to get in some other guy's car or whatever. The driver pepper sprayed the person, right? But he's sitting in his car, so it's an enclosed place. So he may have gotten the other guy, but mostly what happened is (laughs) he got himself. Then he had to drive home in it? No, no. Because he, like, got it in his own face, he ended up, like, driving his car into a pole. Oh, and it's hilarious, <laughs> but it's like the number one reason that I'm like, nah, it's not for me. I will do something stupid if I have that. <laughs> yeah, not not a toy. No, not I a am toy. far too clumsy. I even a knife. I have a couple, and even those, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Only for emergencies. <laughs> even then, I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> Cut my finger off trying to st- stab somebody else. Well, after Kaylin gets the bag slapped okay, sorry, out of her hand, sorry. you're good. She she does have the thought that you thought she should have. She's <laughs> like, "Look, Nadine, do you do you really know how to help? Are are you sure? Because eh, I'm eh, <laughs> I don't feel great about it." Yeah. Now Nadine totally puts the situation to rest by saying her dad kind of explained what to do once in this situation, like. A little bit. Uh, a long time ago. Uh, oh, you, So, yeah, we're good. I, I, I would like you to further... 50% sure I know what I'm doing. I would like you to further explain the situation that <laughs> your dad thought this was. Because this... <laughs> yeah. This is a magic-induced seizure, honey. <laughs> and you lived in was Westland. Was he trying to teach you that? So I feel <clears throat> like I feel like it wasn't this situation. <laughs> Maybe. So they lift Kara's head, and Nadine rubs lavender on her temples, which is nice. Yeah, it just, you know. But I also have lavender in, like, things I wash my body with. So... Lotion. <laughs> yeah. It helps you sleepy. It makes you a little no, sleepy. It will help a headache, make you a little sleepy, which is in the right directions if you're dealing with convulsions. So I'm yeah. going to give Nadine this. Is it effective? No. Is she doing the best she can to help Kara right now? Yes. Yeah, she, and it may not be enough, but she's doing everything she can. She is doing even the best, if it's not enough. She is doing the best she can. But it's the like the best she right now. We're not we're not in disagreement that there's other better people. I'm just trying to I'm trying to give her just a tiny bit of credit because she is trying. But it is like if you're a local uh, essential oil lady, <laughs> pop yes. out of the, like if someone had a seizure at Meyer, 
and the local Young Living or doTERRA seller came out of the crowd and was like, I can help. I have Fuck. lavender oil. Mm. <laughs> also, maybe peppermint will help. Mm. Maybe back off. <laughs> We're going to call EMS. That works <laughs> on the medical mile. Yeah. That yeah. would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> lavender aside, the problem is the convulsions. Yeah. They can't get her to drink anything to help, right? The stuff she would have to drink, she would have to drink way too much of it. They know that's just not an option. But they have to stop those first. There is one thing, though, that Nadine thinks might help, and that is tincture of maypop. A doctor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, tincture of maypop. Yeah. Tincture of maypop. It. Well, it's a sedative. Okay. See, so it'll, you know, just calm everything down, just like the lavender. All they have to do is drop some on her tongue, and she'll be able to swallow it. Mm. Now, Kaylin doesn't like the sound of Nadine's, I think. But like we just talked about, they're all out of options. It's, it's the only thing they got, so it's what they have to try. Okay. Now, I've, I've gone a little bit further. So I know that the issue with this specific thing that she's going to try to do isn't what I'm about to say. But I know I worked in the medical field with the dogs. Or like with, I worked in the vet field for a little while. And you there's the same medical field. You yeah. handled needles and stuff. Yeah. So there <laughs> is. It's not like you just jammed it wherever. <laughs> there's a certain sedative that you can give that will basically make your dog not want to do shit. Like you could just move them around. They're not going to move. They're not going to really fight with you. But they're still aware the entire time. Yeah. So if they're freaking out if they're having an anxiety attack and you give them the sedative they're still having the anxiety attack yeah they're just unable to do to anything react about it to it so it, i know that's not the situation here but even that alone is enough for me to be like mm, I, I would hate to give her a sedative and have her still be having some type of internal freak whatever's going yeah. on inside still be still happening happening and now we don't even know that it's happening because she can't, she's not physically reacting to it. So we're like, oh, she's cool. She's just sleeping. She's not. She's right. in physical distress. And now we have no way to tell. And now she's, she's totally calm and we don't even know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, now with she's her. knocked out. So, like, sedatives are not always the best solution, especially if somebody's in a, you know, in a seizure. Like, that's not the right. right I and get I, where she's trying to do. She's trying to get her to stop and calm down, but that's not the right move for sure. And see, this is where I think I agree. Well, I know I agree with you, but this is where it takes somebody who knows to say something like that to be left to that decision. Yeah. That, that, you know what I mean? That's why I'm like. We don't know if Nadine thought that for sure no. or if she she did in her mind was like, no, that's a risk we're we're going to take. But like, yeah, I wouldn't have even known that. I'm just saying, I'm barely, like, I don't have extensive medical knowledge. There are, I'm sure, people listening that know way the fuck more. Yeah, but... we are not doctors. Anything you've heard on this podcast should not be used for any sort of medical Absolutely advice. Absolutely not. Without but question, don't do it. You would assume Nadine should know more, and if she doesn't know more than I know, then that bitch should not be giving uh, somebody <laughs> convulsing anything. Then she shouldn't go by medicine woman. No. Right. And, no, and that's the thing. If you've never done this before and you're just guessing, go get a doctor, Nadine. <laughs> Don't be like, I have some shit to give her. Well, we do know that somebody else is on the way. Mm. There is like a top healer on the way, right? So that's that's a known quantity. That's all I'm saying. A guy so who somebody says else is coming. Healer. We don't know for sure who it is. Nadine probably doesn't care at this point because it's somebody with more medical expertise than her. I know. They're trying but to I'm get... still in with you that like there should be somebody there from the palace to like take care of this. Yeah. And I know they're trying to get this done as quick as possible. And I like I, I get it. Like <sighs> we had to make this happen. As yeah. soon as we could, but... Yeah, this is the first response. This is the emergency people showing up right now. But Nadine had to run all the way back up the fuck to her room, so I feel like somebody could have run the fuck up to a doctor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, grabbed a doctor on the way down. Right? I also feel like Harris and his dude probably should have showed up first because Harris is like a soldier. Yeah. I'm sure he could haul run ass. Run faster? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Nadine starts to open the bottle when the light from the door to the pit is blocked. Pan up. 
there is a silhouette of a man in a hooded cloak at the top. Creepy. He pauses for a second, taking in the situation. Then, as Kalen absently strokes Kara's brow, the man descends the ladder. Mm. And that is the end of chapter 12. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, you went high there. Oh, I see. I don't know. Big, scary, dark silhouette kind of implies bad for me. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Or this is the dude I was just talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean, never mind. Never mind. No? I'm just going to let that sit. (laughs) All right. We don't know who he is yet. No, we don't. It's a mysterious stranger. And other than what Nadine has done for Kara, nothing has been done for Kara at this point. (laughs) At lavender the end of the oil. chapter. Some lavender, right? Got your lavender. It had to be you oil, because you can't yeah, just put lavender. She lav- hasn't even given her what, what was in the bottle yet. Yeah. The lavender, like, it's not, it has to be oil, because lavender's a fucking flower. It's a flower. She didn't just put a flower on her head. I think <laughs> if she had, that would show that she's even more novice. She knew that lavender did a thing, <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know what to do with it. to dry it. At like, least dried, at least dried lavender. Like the first time that you buy weed and it shows up on stalks with little buds, and you're like, "This is not how I pictured it going into the cartoon joint that the dare officer showed me." <laughs> how do I make this the other thing? Well, and... you got to turn the lavender into oil, my yeah. my boy. Let me show you how it's done. Well, nowadays the kids have YouTube, so and vape pens. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, <laughs> still going into oil. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Lavender flavored vape. That's, I mean, it's out there. Oh, it's got to be, right? It is. I've seen it. That would make me way too relaxed. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> I'd be fine with the weed, but you give me the lavender, I'd be like, oh man, you guys feel like taking a nap? Yeah. No, you would be napping <laughs> for sure. Well, if you wanted to let us know what you thought of this chapter, you can. And I would <gasps> encourage it. You can email us at podcastatt at gmail.com. <laughs> Or you can find us on any of our social media accounts <laughs> at podcast. ATT. See, I threw you off with saying accounts, didn't I? Yeah. If you enjoyed this episode a lot, look, if this is like the high point of your day or your week <laughs> or your year. Sorry. No, I'm not going to. I I wholeheartedly believe it might be. And you wanted to help support the show. You can. You can go to patreon.com slash podcast. ATT. And make a pledge. And become Any a number. best book friend ever. Yeah. I mean, look, worst case scenario, we'll think you're cool. Best case scenario, we are bestest fucking friends forever, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? No. And there's even drinking buddies in between there. Yeah. So, like, th- it's all upside. It's all upside. <laughs> <laughs> and there's stuff on there, too. There is stuff on there. Uh, We've got. Shout outs, hand drawn images from Jade herself. We've got t shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, et cetera, et cetera. Not to mention, you get to check out the Discord where we go live so we can chat with you guys on there. It's all, it's all a good time. And sometimes Nate does a little lens thing where he talks. I'm starting to figure it out. I did it for the beer hunt today and I had fun, even though I, I uploaded a few and then I realized they all went up at the same time. So my long and drawn out hunt for the beer seemed like it was over in two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, that was way cooler when I was doing it. But yeah, okay. Whatever. It's they, up went, there. they went on a journey with you anyway. Little, little peek behind the scenes. Oh, peek. Under the kilt. <laughs> what I do for beer. Under the kilt. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> That's a podcast name right there. Under the kilt. <laughs> so we, we need a Scottish person on that podcast. Let's call John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, again for listening, and we'll see you real soon. <laughs> Bye.